I'm just, just hoping not to get a ticket right now. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, uh, commissioners, are we going to um, call the meeting to order and then make a motion to go into executive sessions? Yes. Okay. So for the executive session, and we it looks like, like we are live, Commissioner. Okay. Um, so let let me go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, so I will do that. I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is a staff meeting of the Hamilton County Board of County Commissioners. Today is December eighth, twenty twenty. We are going to flip our script here a little bit today and. Um, we have three regular agenda items and then we have two executive sessions and so we um, are going to go into those executive sessions first before we get to the regular agenda items. Um, Commissioner Parks, did you have a, a question related to that? Um, I was just going to ask Bridget, is this the link for the executive session mm -hmm. or I noticed that there was another one? <laughs> Um, that, sh that should be the link. Uh, the first one is a scheduling item. The second one is your link. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we are joining a separate Zoom. So Bridget, help us out here a little bit. So we're going to hang up from this. It will continue to stream live uh, while we're in exec session. We'll have to get on another call and then we will hang up that call and come back onto this one. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Oh, any other questions, commissioners? I have no okay. question. Okay. All right. Fingers crossed here. All right. So I'm going to then move that we go into executive session pursuant to RC section 121.22 G3 to conduct a conference with an attorney to discuss imminent litigation and an executive session pursuant to RC section 121.22 G1 to consider the appointment of Appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official. Second. Commissioner Drew House? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. Thank you. I'll see you in the next session. Mm -hmm.
Are we are we back in? I believe so. There we go. Commissioner Dumas, are you on? Waiting on one see. more commissioner. Hold yeah, on. I don't see her okay. yet. Okay. Okay. Is Michael on? I'm here. I'm here. All right, Michael. So do I, in this public session, do I need to adjourn from the executive session back into the regular session? Yeah, that is correct. Okay. Let me know when Commissioner Summer Odemis is on. Okay, there she is, Denise. Okay. All right. Um, I am going to move that we go out of executive session and adjourn into regular session. Second. I'm sorry. I think you want to return to open session. Return to open session. Right. Do you need to? Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to move that we um, go out of exec session and return to our open session. Second. Commissioner sure Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner sure Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner sure Parks? Yes. Thank you. All right. And I'm going to turn the meeting over to uh, Vice President Commissioner Summer Dumas to um, carry on with the regular agenda items. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Thank um, you. Uh, we have uh, three other three topics we need to discuss for our staff meeting today. And our first topic is the 2021 budget discussion. And I'm going to pass it over to Jeff Alito, our county administrator, and see uh, where you want to begin with our budget discussion. Thank you, um, uh, Madam Vice President. Um, and yeah, this is a, a really a placeholder item on the agenda today, uh, just to allow for formal public discussion uh, on any thoughts, questions, um, uh, suggestions or recommendations that the individual commission offices uh, might have uh, for modifying the administrator's recommended budget. So uh, I know I've had discussions with each office uh, about uh, different areas of, of the budget. Um, I think at this point I've received uh, formal um, written, uh, uh, written suggestions from uh, two of the offices. So what I, what I would be doing at this point and uh, on anything I've received verbal or otherwise, I'll work with the budget office uh, to, uh, to put a report together that would inform the board um, of what the recommend, of what those recommend recommendations and suggestions would mean, and how that would impact the recommended budget financially, um, and would hope to have that to you by the end of this week, um, so that the board could conduct its uh, its hearing on Thursday. Uh, there's another time reserved on the 15th uh, for discussion, and we could continue to discuss the um, how we how we. Uh, um, morph the budget at that particular time uh, so that the board could uh, uh, could vote on the 17th. So at this point in time, if there's any other uh, any other questions or um, I know in, in past years, commissioners have talked a little bit about um, some of the some of the suggestions and recommendations they have for the budget. But really, this was designed to be your time uh, for that deliberation. Uh, and I'll, uh, myself or John would be available to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I'd like to know if there's anyone online public that um, had indicated that they had any comments they'd like to make. Mr. Sure, we do not have anyone in the attendee list currently. Okay. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Parks, would you like to make some comments? Um, sure. Um, I'm excited about this budget. Mm -hmm. I, I think that it is um, headed in a direction to, uh, to improve the, the way that the county does business. And to, I, I find, I think that it's inclusive. It will, um, it will include uh, our community, people in our community. I believe that we have taken steps. 
where they will be welcome, where we are letting them know that their talents are, are needed and welcomed. And that, um, so, you know, as, as we go through it, I'm, I'm just so proud. It looks like every objective that I had for mm -hmm. the resolution, which states that racism is a public health crisis, that mm -hmm. this team has put the objective and the solution mm -hmm. funding in the budget in order to address it. Mm -hmm. and, and I just couldn't be prouder. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, I'm going to, uh, I'll be watching. I'll be watching and cheering <laughs> you guys on. Mm -hmm. so, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Parks. I certainly agree with everything that you've said, and I'll make more comments at a later date. And I did submit my comments in as it relates to this budget, but it's, uh, I believe that the people of Hamilton County will be very uh, happy about how we looked at the priorities that impact them. And uh, when they look at the budget, they'll be uh, excited about it too. And as Jeff had said, there will be a hearing on Thursday uh, at 6 p.m. And the purpose of that, of that is to make sure we include those that are working and possibly can't give their input. Uh, they can be a part of that uh, public hearing at six o'clock. Um, so other than that, I have uh, no additional comments uh, about the budget. Jeff, Madam Vice President, the only thing I, I would ask just to make sure we're buttoning uh, everything up here is um, uh, Assistant Administrator Bergen is on the line. John, is there anything additional from a mechanics perspective uh, that, uh, that you need at this point as we continue to, to uh, uh, do some analysis and lock some things down? I don't think there's anything further we need right now, no. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And thank your staff for all that they're doing. Absolutely. I'd, I'd like to add one more thing. Sure. And, uh, the the truth, the 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 fact that if you want to know where an entity's priorities lie, just mm -hmm. take a look at the budget. Mm -hmm. and, and and I and I believe that our budget tr truly reflects our. Mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. I agree. They say put your money where your mouth is. So we didn't just talk about it, but we uh, put it in the in the budget. So. Okay, our next um, order of business is um, an update on racism as a public health crisis. And uh, Commissioner Parks, I know we do have some couple people that are gonna speak to that. Would you like to open it up? I really would, thank you so much. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as we go through and, and meet our objectives for the resolution, um, you know, because we, we were thoughtful about the things that we put in. And mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure that we could actually accomplish it. We have. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, during these last few meetings of mine, um, I have requested that the departments and the people involved would come to the staff meeting and mm -hmm. give us an update. So with that said, um, I would like to start with Mr. Woody Keown mm -hmm. from the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, who will give us an update on what we are doing there. Good Thank afternoon, you. Woody. Good afternoon, Commissioner Parks, how are you? I'm good, it's good to see you. Thank you, you too. Well, first of all, let me thank you uh, uh, to the commissioners, uh, to the staff, and, uh, and particularly to you, Commissioner Park, for your leadership and uh, uh, helping to bring us together to deal with this, uh, this issue of uh, racism as a public health crisis. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us to collaborate. Uh, we want you to know that we have been working with the staff, uh, with Frank and, and others, to try to develop the best program we possibly can uh, to deliver a, a very dynamic experiential uh, training opportunity and program for the, uh, for the leadership and, and staff of the, uh, of the Hamilton County. Uh, we want you to know that the uh, plans that we have uh, provides a safe environment for you. Uh, we've been operating under the right uh, protocols and have not had any incidents, and we plan to continue that way. Uh, this will be an on-site experience because we think that in order to get the maximum benefit from it, the on-site experience of the Freedom Center's assets help a lot in terms of bringing out the learning uh, that uh, we plan to share with you. 
Uh, we have some training dates options that we're looking at uh, to try to make that happen. We're currently looking at uh, the last week and a uh, couple of dates in the last week in uh, January 1st or the first week in September, back-to-back -back options. Uh, the idea would be February. I'm um, sorry, February, last, last week in January, first week in February. And then, uh, you know, the session opportunities, the goals are basically to really try to help the leadership and staff members understand this concept of implicit bias, looking at it from a historical context and bringing it up to today's world and try to create and develop opportunities and strategies to create intrinsically inclusive leaders. Those are people who are more naturally inclusive of people and situations and so forth. Also, we're looking to try to take that learning and basically try to give opportunity for people to learn more about insights into the community, insights into customers, consumers that you're serving, and things like that, and practicing these skills of intrinsic inclusion leadership so that people will understand and recognize when these implicit or unconscious biases uh, surface when they're at play and the impact that they might have when you're providing the services to the people that we serve here in Hamilton County. And uh, then we've got uh, ways that we are looking to try to transform and try to uh, uh, basically look at how we measure success and give your staff and your leadership opportunity to, to understand what, how we're making progress over time. So uh, with that, I'll stop and, uh, and see if there are any questions or turn it over to, uh, to uh, Frank, I guess. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, Frank, are you there? Can, can we see you? Yeah, uh, you can hear me. You can't see oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so Frank has been working with the professionals at the Freedom Center. And so will you give us an update from your point of view? Sure. Um, we're, we're moving uh, right along. We have a, a signed agreement with Freedom Center uh, to develop the program that Woody just described. And we are, you know, we're really excited about uh, doing the training, but more uh, and particularly uh, having it conducted in, in, such, at, in such a great uh, uh, venue or uh, environment. So we have uh, 80 senior managers identified. We're going to break them up into two, uh, two groups, 40 apiece, and each group will attend a full-day training uh, at Freedom Center. And then, <clears throat> as Woody indicated, there will be some follow-up Acti uh, uh, activities um, that uh, that occur, but um, Ed Demerit, who's my uh, who's the supervisor for human resource development here in the HR department, and I um, will we've actually had a meeting with um, uh, the Freedom Center consultants, uh, Miss Everett and Miss Gamelli Carroll, and uh, we'll most likely be meeting with them uh, through. Uh, December and uh, part of January, just to uh, uh, make sure or to uh, let them uh, uh, be, be aware of uh, or be knowledgeable of some of the other training that we're doing in this area in our civil treatment program and um, also um, any uh, personnel policies that may uh, come into play. So. Uh, be a really uh, collaborative effort, and we look forward to working with them. And most, more importantly, the, um, the training you know um, that's going to occur here soon. Okay, thank you, Frank, and thank you so much for uh, all of the effort that you have put in, um, ladies and gentlemen. What we are doing here is cutting edge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there will, there, like we have heard from other counties and entities that want to um, participate and perhaps do the same thing. And I'm just so excited about it. I am too. Okay. So, so thank you. Thank you so much, President Woody Keown. And, um, and, and I'm just looking forward. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate the help and I appreciate the opportunity to look forward to it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. And I see Major Price is on here. Is he to speak? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, well, yeah, yeah, for the next subject. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Very good. So, are, are there are there any questions for Woody or Frank? I have one question about the senior management that has been chosen for the training. Uh, did they volunteer, or did you guys select who was going to be a part of the training? Actually, actually, I, I identified all the senior managers that, uh, and that's defined as any uh, all employees in pay grade. 25 and then in the executive pay grades of uh, 
uh, uh, B uh, of uh, C, D, and E. So that total uh, population is 80 employees. Okay. Okay. And uh, I, I mean, we have we're thinking about the other 180 or so senior level managers um, as the next effort. So um, you know, we we have not lost sight of that group, and um, but we're focused on on this current group of 80, and then we'll move on to the larger group. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just said I want you to know that you will have the master trainings for these sessions when we do the, these level training, mm -hmm. and that's going to be uh, Janet and uh, Vincent. That's one of the reasons we've gotten those dates buttoned down where we get those two together. So they will mm -hmm. be the trainers for both 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 of these sessions. Great. Sorry. And and uh, there will be training for each level of employees at the county. Mm -hmm. So not just the seniors, the next level of managers, and on down through the um, through, through all the employees. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, we, we want we want to build a culture at the county. Mm -hmm. So Frank was getting ready to say something, I think. Well, I just wanted to mention that that we do have a plan. And in fact, we've instituted a new requirement for all employees to complete civil treatment on a two year, uh, every two years so that we're not in a situation where somebody takes it once and then they may never take it again. So we're going to have a continuous uh, rotation of employees through our civil treatment uh, class mm -hmm. as a long term strategy. Great. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I'm excited. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. So thank you. Thank you so mm -hmm. much, Woody and Frank. Thank you. Oh, so so we'll speak to you soon, President Woody. <laughs> okay, take care. Best of luck to you. Thanks Thank for all you've done. Um, okay. Anything else, Commissioner Parks? Um, the, the, may, may I move to the next item? Sure. Uh huh. Okay, and this includes my friend, Major Earl Price from the Sheriff's Department, mm -hmm. who will discuss with us the training and the uh, what what has been going on over there. What exciting uh, developments is happening mm -hmm. at the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department. Okay, great. Well, thank you um, for inviting me. And um, I would just like to say that as a result of the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office being accepted into the ABLE program that is active by Standard Ship for Law Enforcement in September of this year, um, we have made some strides. As a matter of fact, we now have four ABLE instructors who successfully completed the required training um, based on Georgetown University, um, as well as the uh, Shepherd Mullum Law Firm. And so um, we have one more instructor, hopefully, that will go through the process the latter part of this month. I was actually hoping that um, we would have um, actually had more instructors but um, there has been some serious constraints based on Georgetown, whereby you can only have two instructors um, from each agency uh, per training session, that is train the trainers. So um, that's why we only have four to date. Uh, these four trainers, uh, they will launch um, our training next week. And um, I'm trying to make sure that it starts on the 15th. And I had to actually rally all of the commanders around this process, as well as the chief and the sheriff, to make sure that um, this is going to get done. As a matter of fact, I just got a text that um, they're going to march forward, and it's going to have to be the 15th. And that's what um, I'm being very staunch about, in all honesty. We're going to have 12 supervisors that are going to go through this training, because this type of training, you want to start it from the, the top down. You want to get the buy-in. And um, in all honesty, everyone that I've spoke to, all the commanders, uh, this is something that they really and truly want, they need. And so um, uh, really, you know, we're, even though we're gonna have one class um, before next year, I am really hoping that the next administration coming in 2021, uh, that they're gonna put as much energy into this as, um, as we have. And they're gonna have to do that because this is too important. Uh, we now have a ABLE coordinator um, that's going to launch the training next week. Uh, it will not be myself, um, but he's going to have to take over. Um, the sheriff's office had to also complete 
a 10 step process doing this process as well. We had to really satisfy Georgetown as, um, as well as um, Mullen Shepherd, the law firm. We now have an anti-retaliation policy. Matter of fact, I wrote the policy myself. And so um, it's in place. It's been posted for everyone to read. And um, I can just say that um, it's, it, we're ready. We are ready. Um, I've done everything I can do and um, we're ready. Well, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Major Earl Price. Um, we we're so excited about this. This was uh, one of those initiatives that um, Jeff Aluto uh, came up with it. We, we talked about it and worked it out. And, um, and, and I, I just think that it is going to enhance our department. Mm -hmm. It will um, help us and, uh, and, and save lives, mm -hmm. you know, which, which, which is what we definitely want because we value life. Mm -hmm. So, um, so uh, I, I want to thank you, Major Price. And I have had discussions with the new administration coming in and um, I have been assured that there will be as much commitment uh, mm -hmm. from from that administration. So, so really happy about that. And mm -hmm. and I I want to express my appreciation to you for your buy-in and your hard work and your commitment. So, thank you, sir. Not a problem at all. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank all of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so that'll do it. All right, Madam Vice President. If I if I could just very briefly. Uh, just to echo the, the comments, I just want to thank uh, Major Price uh, for all of his efforts on this. Um, you know, essentially, the, the work that the administration did on this was essentially handing a seed off to the sheriff's office, recognizing that, that you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to die or germinate based upon um, whether or not it's something that they feel meshed with the culture and what the organization needs over there. There's nothing... Um, that we could do over here in the administration to, to force that it had to be something that was organic within the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't be happier with the way, um, you know, from leadership on, on down to uh, the, the ranks. Um, I've heard from people saying that um, how excited they, they are about this. And, uh, and just want to thank Major Price for all of his, um, his efforts in, in getting this uh, kicked off. I know it's been a lot of work um, and they could have at any time uh, just stopped work, and this could have gone off into, into the ether uh, when when the board and the administration mm -hmm. had to move on to some other things, COVID response, all that kind of stuff. And it, sometimes on, on weekends when I would least expect it, I'd be getting updates from Major Price about here's where we are with Georgetown, and they just never lost, mm -hmm. lost focus or track of the program and, and just really want to thank Major Price for all of his work on it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, Major Price and Frank, can, can you talk about what else uh, will happen in terms of training throughout the county, employment force? Uh, you want me to go? Is it okay if I? Sure. I, 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 you know, this is just not for our in-service personnel, but if you're going to change your culture um, from the top down, you've got to change it from the bottom up. We have what is called a basic corrections academy. It's a six week academy. Uh, these um, recruits, they come in fresh off the street. And um, this program actually is gonna be installed right into our basic corrections academy. Also, this program is gonna be taught to our civilian as well as all of our um, uniform personnel. And the goal is to make sure that every employee um, gets, tra gets able trained. Also, our instructors, we have a commitment with Georgetown that we have to um, be willing to train outside of the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office as well um, at no cost other than travel. And so um, that, that's, that's where we're at. You know, we had to satisfy, and I forgot to mention this, a 10-step um, a process. And this is what anyone that uh, is accepted by ABLE, there's a full 10-step process. And it's not an easy process in all honesty. But um, we had to adhere to that, and they're going to make sure. I, I, I know this for sure. When you're dealing with um, Jonathan Arany from D.C., he's going to make sure <laughs> that um, 
they abide by every step. And he he is not one person, he's not anyone to mess around with. And so um, that's the kind of um, people that this next administration is gonna actually rub elbows with. And it's a good thing. If you're gonna change your culture, you gotta, you gotta go at it from the bottom to the top, top to the bottom and stick to it. It's not just the eight hours that they're gonna receive the first year for every employee. And I, and I hope that every employee gets this training next year. Uh, that's, that's our goal, but there's two years. I mean, I'm sorry, there's two hours of training every subsequent year after that. And so um, I think that this is gonna be something that we've never seen before. I've been in this business for 39 years and now you're gonna have officers. They're gonna be looking out for each other to save lives, to protect the safety of that officer, to make sure that that officer is doing the right thing and not covering up for something's wrong. And that's something that we should have had years ago. That's, that's awesome. Thank you, Major no Price. Um, I do have a question. When you say that you are required to train other entities outside of the Sheriff's Department, can, can you give us an example of who that might be? Well, it would have to be at the request of that agency, of course. Um, mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, Cincinnati Police. If you look at all of our surroundings... Yeah, yeah, let's say, for example. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Cincinnati Police, you know, everyone knows they have their um, basic Peace Officer Academy. Um, I forgot the, uh, the exact count of, um, of, of, of all their personnel, but this will really be great for them. This will be fantastic. And, and this is something that if they were to open the door... If they, were, if they were told to do it, um, they're gonna have to buy in. And this will be something like they've never seen before. This is something that all law enforcement agencies throughout this entire country, but we're talking about the state of Ohio, we're talking about the city of Cincinnati, Hamilton County, we should all have this. And if, and if the public, if they really, really knew what this was about, oh my goodness, this will really be something else. It'll be something that we've never seen before out of the public. This is really what the public is looking for. They're looking for transparency. They're looking for honesty out of, um, out of, out of um, the police agencies as well as corrections. I mean, they're just looking for us to be honest people. That's what they're looking for. And you gotta, you gotta be able to, to walk it, not just talk it, you gotta prove it. And this is one way of doing it. Wow. So uh, that's, that's great information. Thank you so much. No and, uh, and, and thank you for your, I, I see how passionate you are about it. <laughs> that's awesome. Jeff, do you, Jeff or Frank, do you have anything to add? I, I don't have anything to add other than what Major Price said. I think he, he hit it beautifully. And I, I think anything I would say would, uh, uh, would, would, would pale in comparison. <laughs> so where's Frank? Is he still on there? Hey, Frank. Uh, Frank, I think you may have just muted yourself. I'm sorry, I, was, I had some technical difficulty. <laughs> but uh, um, actually, I'm, uh, 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 I did some early research on this, on the program, and um, was quite impressed with, the, um, with it, and um, was really thrilled to hear that Hamilton County was, uh, Sheriff's Office was going to be participating in it. And um, actually, I'd like uh, to get some exposure, uh, Ed and I, to get some exposure as well to it, to, uh, See if we can, you know, trans. Uh, if we can bring any of those concepts over to some of the other things that we're doing here. Okay, wonderful. Okay, well, um, if there aren't any more questions, I, I just want to I want to thank you, Major Price, and I thank you, President Woody Keong, and and Frank for for all of your work. And um, I just want the public to know that for uh, each objective on the resolution that we will provide an update to you weekly. So thank you. Great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you both. And for all your hard work um, that is really just beginning. Uh, training is so important because uh, the bottom line, if, if you know better, you do better. So um, I'm sure that this training will provide that knowledge that people need. So thank you both.
Thank you. Okay. We'll move on, on to our next agenda item, um, port site readiness update. And I see Jeff, you're down there. I see some people on the screen. I know Laura is here. Would you like to kick it off? Sure. Um, I'll, I believe Laura Brunner and Melissa Johnson are on the line uh, from the port. And I'll just kick it off very briefly at, at a high level. I think this um, the, the item on the agenda today relates uh, to the uh, an overview of the port site readiness programming. Um, and that really uh, gets right into one of the proposals in uh, the recommended budget this year. Um, just a little bit of background for folks who, who may be watching. Um, you know, one of the, the questions that, that regularly plagues, uh, especially urban built out uh, developed counties is what is, the, what is the proper role for a county uh, in economic development? What is the proper niche for, the, for a county to play? Um, and how do we go about effectively competing with, uh, with our uh, competitive uh, uh, outlying rural and suburban counties that have a lot of land to offer uh, firms that either need to uh, 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 be retained in a county or be attracted, how to, how to promote it, uh, jobs and, and investment and the attraction of, of firms. And one of the, the things that the county has uh, structured over the past several years, and, and I think this budget really starts to, to bring it to a head, is, a, uh, uh, is an emphasis on um, ensuring that we have access to publicly controlled large tracts of land uh, to make sure that we have those opportunities for firms looking to relocate uh, or to come to, uh, to Hamilton County or simply to be retained in Hamilton County um, as they are looking to expand. So I think the, the budget that um, we've submitted to, to the board uh, attempts to really start to put together a focus and a niche for the county and economic development. We have um, the economic, the community economic development fund that has been proposed. Then we have the site readiness proposal uh, of two million dollars um, to invest in what is really a long, um, a long run game and a, a game that requires vision and patience of investing in these sites uh, to make sure that we have those opportunities for firms looking to locate here. And I think we're uh, presuming the board moves ahead with this budget. I think we're really starting to carve out. Um, what is an identifiable brand and niche for economic development uh, for the county to implement. So I'm going to turn it over to Laura and Melissa now who are going to go through a lot more detail um, as to what the port is doing as it relates to implementing site readiness efforts currently in Hamilton County, which of course then could be expanded upon presuming the board um, uh, enacts that portion of the budget in 2021. So Laura, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Melissa's going to pull up her screen. It's good to be with all of you. Hopefully we can be at least half as interesting as your previous speakers were. Um, <laughs> it's nice to talk to you about this side of our business. You're all, um, all three of the commissioners are on the land bank board. You're used to hearing what we're doing in the neighborhoods, um, primarily in residential and then with the commercial business districts. This is the part of our business that's about jobs. And so we're gonna primarily talk about industrial today, but I wanna start off by taking a look at uh, what is now called Midpoint Crossing. Previously was Jordan's Crossing. It's a great link. I was private chatting back with Woody Keon. Woody was the president of the foundation board at Allen Temple when we purchased this property from them. Uh, you can see where the purple is at the top is where the church is. And the church unfortunately owned the 440,000 square foot shopping center that they bought at a horrible time that declined in value almost immediately. And so we were able to actually assume the liabilities of this um, shopping center from them. Um, interestingly, we ran the title through the land bank, which eliminated their, the $950,000 of delinquent property taxes that the church mm -hmm. had on that property. And we paid a million dollars to the church for the green you see right at the corner there, um, uh, giving them some capital to expand their church and move the programming that they had previously inside the shopping center into the church itself. So this is a good example of where we had an asset 
that was clearly not providing any value. It was blighted. It was a source of crime. It was a, a burden for the property owners, which in this case was a church. And there were church trustees that had personal liability. So it was um, a great win-win for us to step into the ownership of this. And we, in working with the community, and I think this was in 2014, 2015, we developed this master plan of what the community would ideally like to see on this site. And that is a concentration of jobs. So we've got high density office here. We have some residential. We have amenities for the neighborhood in retail establishments. And who knows if it'll end up looking precisely like this. They also want a green space, a community gathering space. We're able to get $500,000 from the state of Ohio and did a walking path around the whole site along with some, a retention pond and some um, seating um, we did a few years ago. So we now have, um, we could have sold this. This is a good example, just like our industrial property. We're kind of fighting the market forces the old fashioned market forces want this to be low end, right? I mean, that's where in similar to what you've seen us talk about in the land bank with neighborhood properties, um, market forces, these neighborhoods get disinvested and then the users end up being less and less valuable either to the tax base of the county or to the neighborhood themselves. So we've had people that wanted to buy this for truck storage and other mm. kind of warehouse type things that would not have jobs, would not have property value, wouldn't pay taxes, wouldn't provide services to the neighborhood. And that's where um, Jeff hit on a very key term, publicly controlled land. So if we have land controlled by an organization like ours, which is public, we can stand firm and say, no, that use is not good enough. Mm -hmm. We're going to wait. In this case, it has paid off just this year. We signed a purchase and sale agree um, agreement with the developer. It'll, it's gonna take some time to build it out and COVID didn't help, but we feel optimistic that we're gonna deliver to that neighborhood what they've been asking for, mm -hmm. jobs and neighborhood servicing, servicing benefits. And now, and that's, so this, in this case, it's not commercial. I mean, it's not industrial, it's commercial, it's office. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're going to spend the rest of our time um, talking about, and Melissa and I both talk fairly quickly so you can ask questions. Well, let me, let me go back to the first one, Laura. Sure. Um, and you mentioned about the purple, and since we don't have an a arrow or pointer, could you kind of tell us what the other, yeah. like the, yeah. Okay, so the, the purple at the top is the church. Right. The purple at the bottom is the community action agency. I didn't okay. mention that, that they had already previously purchased the old Elder Beerman store mm -hmm. from um, the church. Okay. And then in this case, the pink is office. Okay. The blue is residential. Um, the, or the orange and yellow are, are a combination of retail. And like, I think this concept had a, um, either a YMCA or a gym inside of that okay. yellow. Okay. Was there a thought to put a, a grocery store? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the billion dollar question. Every one of these neighborhoods, right? We're going into neighborhoods where the grocery stores have all left. Correct. Uh, right uh -huh. across the street from this, mm -hmm. um, right above those two orange lines is where the old Kroger was. Right. And it is now a save a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, we're not giving up hope on that. Mm -hmm. uh, commissioner in any one of the neighborhoods where we're talking, but I'm sure you've seen how much trouble that is in Avondale. I think mm -hmm. what we've got to have is a brand new concept of grocery. Mm -hmm. We've talked mm -hmm. previously about Kroger, about having delivery into these neighborhoods, almost like a, a hub, like you see the Amazon hubs now. Um, can we actually get delivery into one central place? Mm -hmm. um, can we get more farmer's garden type places? Um, that's bigger than just the port. Sure. But we mm -hmm. have to tackle that inside of all these neighborhoods because you're mm -hmm. exactly right. Mm -hmm. The money is leaving the neighborhoods to go to other places mm -hmm. for simple things like food and Thank especially you. for healthy food. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, so going back just quickly, you know, we've got three parts to our strategy. The purple is our public finance practice. You don't see that so much, but that's where we're using our tools given to us by the state to help finance projects. The blue you see very much as board members of the land bank. Um, the um, 
land bank is a very significant part of what we're doing inside of neighborhoods. Uh, we also manage a nonprofit um, called HERC. That's our affordable housing nonprofit. You hear us talk at the land bank board meetings because the land bank sells properties for $1,000 to this nonprofit that builds uh, affordable housing. We're gonna talk in January's board meeting more about the affordable housing at your request from our last meeting. Mm -hmm. And then in red is our industrial. And we started this in 2015. We came up with a very uh, aggressive strategy to bring manufacturing jobs back to this county. It's a key part of why we've got poverty. It's, a key po it's tied into blight. It's tied into racial um, uh, wealth gap. You know, we've lost 100,000 good jobs in our county since 1967. And the manufacturing real estate is the place to put it back. But it's expensive. We, yeah. we work closely with Ready. We're tied into them. If you think of them, they are marketing, right? They're marketing, but they, what they have to market um, is limited by what, generally what the private sector owns. So what we're trying to do is bring public sector real estate into the mix of the properties that they can market and sell. Because I will tell you the private sector is not as selfless as we are. They're willing to sell to a, a warehouse, a distribution building that doesn't have the jobs and doesn't have the payroll. Ready's focused um, along with um, Jobs Ohio on getting advanced manufacturing, putting more of their money, as you talk about putting, where are you gonna put your money? We think the public money, if we're gonna have public subsidy invested in real estate, it should be tied to manufacturing, not to distribution, so that we can bring these high quality jobs. Um, this just shows that Ready has a significant amount of, of inquiry for manufacturing. Because one of the things, you know, good question for you to ask before you put money in manufacturing real estate land is, does anybody want it? You know, is there a demand? And Ready continuously sees that there is. And we feel very strongly in this post COVID world that there's going to be more manufacturing in the United States. Many US companies are realizing it was a mistake to manufacture everything on the other side of the world, both from quality control standpoint, as well as supply chain management. We have to manufacture more here. And Ohio is you know, one of our manufacturing centers of the country. And guess what? Hamilton County is one of the centers of Ohio's manufacturing. It's our history and we can bring it back. Uh, these are the, oh, I think this is, is this you, Melissa? It can be. Yeah, you go. Sure. Um, it's nice to see everyone. Thank you for um, inviting us to the meeting today to talk about, obviously, what we feel is a very important and passionate subject um, and critical to the ongoing health of our economies as a county and in our um, local jurisdictions as well. So as Laura mentioned, we have studied quite a lot with Ready and other national practices around industrial site development as an economic development strategy. And an outcome of that is getting um, a little savvy and aggressive with some return on investment metrics that we want to see and will require come out of the real estate that we acquire and redevelop. So, you know, Jeff um, kind of keyed right into public ownership being paramount. We actually do sometimes see that end users and companies prefer that public ownership be the case um, and that there might provide other flexibility or opportunity. And again, like Laura mentioned, that the parameters are oftentimes different than our private sector partners. Um, our strategy up until now has been focused on larger scale sites. That's been the biggest gap that we've continued to see in Ready Cincinnati's uh, data relative to how responsive we can be. Um, it's really hard to capture the lost economic opportunity for all the times the county's been passed over because we can't be responsive to site um, lead requirements. So we're still focused, um, as you'll see in some of our examples, in a property that is of a little bit larger scale, which is really for us 10 acres or larger. Um, we do ask that our development and uses focus on um, targeting creating 16 jobs per acre and uh, striving to have an average annual payroll of $65,000 um, a year. So these are things that we're um, testing from our own metrics perspective, but we're also actually seeing and realizing in the market as our properties start to transition. One big key element um, of our strategy has been the private sector partnership that we have found in the companies that you see listed on the screen. 
we've um, really, into Laura's credit, um, mainly have had um, extensive conversations and in their investment in our industrial strategy for five years now. And um, so we raised nearly $11 million to support industrial acquisition, um, recognizing that this kind of strategy is going to take significant input and support from not only the public sector and our partnerships, but also the private sector and recognizing um, that, you know, when we all come together, we're all going to stand to benefit. So we're grateful to our private sector partners who have chosen um, to support the efforts of the port. So today we have um, starting to see some um, kind of results, I guess, and some positive leverages um, noted on the screen. You know, Laura mentioned that we started doing this five years ago, and in respect to what it is that we're trying to achieve, I still think the strategy is relatively young. Um, but reintroducing over 150 acres into Hamilton County, given the topography, the urban density, the historic use of our land is really, I think, a phenomenal feat. Um, it has not been easy. And as a result, we're seeing our first 73,000 square foot manufacturing spec building come out of the ground. So we're seeing kind of that next phase, um, you know, starting to materialize for um, our communities and bringing hopefully a potential yield collectively of all of this acreage for the numbers that you see on the screen. And we've generated that potential yield based on those return on investment metrics I just shared with you um, a couple of slides ago. So it's good to be aggressive and hopeful and we hope we're trending in this direction. Relative to leverage funds and what we've looked at financially, and I thought it was really important. I wanna thank um, the commissioners and the administration for the support even up until today in the amount of money that you see noted at the bottom of the screen. This has been investments in two properties specifically, and that's been 2100 Section Road in Amberley Village and the former Dow Chemical Plant, which is a relatively recent acquisition for us. Um, so an investment there to help support remediation. Collectively, when we look at the entire portfolio and the investments that we have, this is what we have seen from an investment contribution perspective, which I think is um, quite impressive. We hope to you know, continue to grow that private sector benefit, which we see at 65%. That represents investment we've seen today, and we are actually working to um, agree to in forthcoming development agreements that we have you know, in the work. So we do see um, the private sector interest coming to bear. We actually do see our private sector partners recognizing the strategy and also how it can um, support some of the next phases of their own development and um, supporting our communities as well. But um, I think it was really important to show for, you know, a dollar to dollar um, that we are using your investment wisely. We want to continue doing that um, in this budget or in future, you know, conversations with um, how we can support the strategy moving forward. Lisa? Yes. Uh, as we look at the federal funding, I don't see anything. So, yeah, so how, how, how would you explain yeah. that? Uh -huh. yeah, it was such a skinny little line item. It wouldn't really, it just kind of petered out on the graphic. Uh -huh. um, so the federal funding is relatively small. What we had tried to do there was use our resources and our US EPA uh, Brownfield Assessment Grant. We did have a little bit of support through Reading, but we used about 15,000 um, of our assessment money that we had given to us from a federal level to support the Dow project. So in comparison to the other elements, it didn't, it wouldn't show. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just looks like zeros. Um, but there is- we are, we are looking at an EDA grant um, is another um, place for the future. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, okay. Yeah, Thank trying you. to identify as projects come up with their own <laughs> needs, identifying different sources of money, but it, mm -hmm. it doesn't show, but it's in there. So, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. So I referred back to some of the success we're seeing in the 20 or excuse me, 73,000 square foot um, industrial spec building. Um, while this is located in the city of Cincinnati, it is in the Bont Hill Roselawn um, neighborhoods. This is part of the former Cincinnati Gardens. We do expect to have a formal announcement um, around a, a great end user coming to that community, bringing jobs, having more integration and creating a more um, accessible network for income and for residents directly in this neighborhood. And bringing new um, you know, investment into Bond Hill, um, which is represented here on the screen. What I like about this and what Laura and I, I think are, are proud of in this scenario is that it is starting to test our return on investment metric numbers and it's proving doable. And so it just gives us more momentum to hold our private sector partners accountable in that conversation when they wanna participate in our development deals moving forward. Yep. One of the really important things to look at there is $64,000 is the average manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons we're just 
Exactly. Really this is how you right. rebuild the middle class. Mm -hmm. It is, and that's a you know that's a spectrum of jobs that become available from someone who may just only have a high school diploma or a GED upwards, you know, to a college education and everything in between, technical skill set. So it's a much further reaching opportunity. Um, and then collectively, that's, you know, what we, that's our end result, which we think is really exciting. So more to come on that, I think over the next couple of days, um, more formally. Great. That's awesome. I, um, on Section Road, this was actually what I call the inaugural kind of um, debut of the port strategy. And this is a 56 acre parcel that does still continue to be on the market, but we think it's really important to call out the fact that as a 56 acre pad ready site, um, we could have sold this property many times over, but to underperforming and low yield uses, and we've stayed true to those return on investment metrics. And it, this parcel in particular is one of its kind in terms of being inside of that 275 belt loop, um, given its acreage, its build ready condition, so we are being selective. I think we think that's important to, in that public ownership, elect to be patient to make sure we have the right outcome. But this table is an example of projects um, through Ready Cincinnati and through Jobs Ohio that have very seriously considered this as an investment opportunity. Project Eagle and Project Viper regrettably um, either chose another location or they did not um, get to pursue their own expansion plans as they originally had anticipated. Project Match is still um, a viable, outstanding prospect, I think, in the region. And so we remain hopeful that it will circle back around um, for us. But we are in um, regular communication with Amberley Village and their constituents there and you know, making sure that we are aligned with their economic development plan. As Laura kind of briefly alluded to, this is really great work as we think, but it is also really expensive. Um, one of the key things that we factor in when we do an acquisition site selection is that we're trying to not be competitive to our private sector partners, but as an end result, we're also acquiring property that is highly challenged, either environmentally, uh, topographically, uh, with access or any other number of parameters. So this table just represents some of the acquisitions, what we have seen from um, a redevelopment cost per acre, an acquisition cost per acre, and then the post redevelopment value is what we work to establish with our industrial brokerage uh, firm. They help us understand um, after we redevelop with a significant amount of subsidy, um, as you can see on the screen, what we can expect to put this back into the market. And so while those numbers uh, may look upside down, uh, really what we've done is remove that barrier to entry and accelerate the opportunity for job creation, investment, and just get these properties otherwise having, you know, remaining in this condition. These are numbers that the private sector cannot really absorb in a pro forma so our collective, you know, the ports work, the county and our other um, partners, the collective work to move these properties back in, into productive use becomes really paramount. And it's on one hand, you could say, well, why would you do this? You're losing you know, 200,000 an acre. That just seems stupid. But on the other hand, as you look at pictures here in a minute of the um, property in Reading, the former Dow chemical site, like if we don't do it, it's, it's going to sit there for another 300 years. I mean, it, yeah. no, there's, it's not going to get better. <laughs> there's never going to be a time where it's going to cost less to improve it. And if we want to help these um, communities, local economies, and we're going to talk in a little bit about Lincoln Heights, I mean, it, makes, it, it makes all the difference in the world for a small community to have one significant property that be, becomes productive again. Mm -hmm. That's it. I, as I look at that chart, and, uh, and we're looking at post-development value per acre, and how do you decide, uh, for instance, uh, the Amberley post-development is only is 20000 more than in Bond Hill? Um, and so how do you decide the level of pricing? Because I would think the Bond Hill would be even a little lower. Bond Hill is a good location. Bond Hill is a great location. Um, okay. Convenient, very, very, very convenient. Okay. And I, I think it's worth mentioning that on a price per acre basis, the parcels mm -hmm. that were as a result of the um, gardens development kind of um, chunked out, if you will, into smaller five, seven, four mm -hmm. acre pieces that there is, is significant demand for. I think that's why we've seen such an in, um, 
movement and interest in that particular mm -hmm. location than we have in others. The okay. price per acre on Section Road is really driven um, also a lot by its size, its location, its pad ready condition, the unique um, market condition that there's not really another one out there. So we can drive mm -hmm. um, maybe a little it's bit. Got, it has, rail, has railroad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. you know, we, we try and, um, you know, we get a lot of advice from a lot of other smart people sure. form these numbers, but those are some of the reasons. And pad, re or, uh, pad ready is really important for sure. Yeah. Sure. Yep. yeah. That's what you're investing in. That's what mm -hmm. Johnson Ohio is investing in. That's what the county, the city are investing mm -hmm. in is all the things that make it easy for a company to sign here and start mm -hmm. building soon. Yeah, and I think we're constantly pressing on that timetable, at least the private sector. And it's one thing to mm -hmm. be pad ready. It's another thing to be in spec development it's, or to be vertically out of the ground. And you know, we're seeing that companies are needing to make faster decisions on shorter timetables. Mm -hmm. So being ready is just even okay. more important. Okay, thank you. This is a, um, so Laura, I think I, as a sake of time, I deleted those photos you referenced, but it's, um, <laughs> If you ever want to go out to a former Dow chemical plant, happy to take you out there. But this is just a quick um, overview uh, in our acquisition in Reading. It's a 25 mm -hmm. acre industrial parcel. It was a former Dow chemical plant. Um, I think closed um, its last use through one of its subsidiaries closed in 2014. And in its um, subsequent ownership, it was partially demolished. Um, so there is just a it's quite a site. They're partially um, falling down buildings. A lot of the above grade chemical plant infrastructure is partially missing. And, you know, the, the adjacent uses of a neighborhood, some other industrial uses, you know, it, it really does tell a story of the need to have more and greater investment here. The property is also um, significantly contaminated from a groundwater perspective, which is one of the reasons why we think our ownership is really key to moving it off of the market into its next phase. There's a lot of regulatory conversation happening with the Ohio EPA and also Dow Chemical, who remains in the conversation as we collectively work to solve for the issues here. Um, we do have a grant application into Jobs Ohio to support this project, and I'll show you a little bit of the nitty gritty and that sources of uses of what it takes to invest in a property like this to move it back out into the market. So as I mentioned, um, this is significantly contaminated. There are a number of environmental conditions, including mercury contaminated soil and property um, wide uh, VOC or volatile organic compound um, groundwater contamination. What effectively that means is as volatile organic compounds break down in water, they become a gas. They will permeate a um, production floor, the floor of a warehouse or a building, and it is toxic to um, inhale. So there are remedies that we will institute on the property to ensure that that development is safe moving forward, that they are approved by the Ohio EPA and corrected um, as we move forward. So as a matter of that, there is a restrictive covenant, as you um, kind of outlined in the R's and the little diced out parts of the graphic, there's a restrictive covenant kind of having that prohibition in place that you have to have the remedy to address that groundwater um, in place before you do development. And that is something that we feel as the port we can be trusted with, we will um, absolutely pledge to do and ensure that our development partners also are in agreement to do that. The unique thing about this property is it does sit in the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act program, um, which means that it is under a risk-based um, approach to contamination, that as long as we can prove to the agency that we're risking away and making you know, the site less risky in their eyes, we can continue to move forward in our path. The Ohio EPA has remarked that they're not all that worried about this site, that they do um, have a lot of faith and think that the path forward is pretty clear and they value, of course, the port's participation in, in doing that. So as a financial um, element, as you can see for what I just described, why some of these properties are just so expensive to do and invest in. At our sources, um, again, we have our patient capital fund um, partners, our private sector partners helped with the acquisition and support we, um, again, are grateful to the county for the um, grant that we see noted here to support the remediation aspect of this site in particular, as well as some of the requests we have out to Jobs Ohio um, in a grant and a loan. We do make kind of note of developer participation. We are in um, negotiations with a prospective developer who could um, lend some development expertise and opportunity. We're not quite to a place where we're um, 
you know, talking about that more. We're still in the middle of that process. But the fact we have a private sector partner who has an appetite for risk and willing to engage in a property of this nature, not only is necessary to make it work, but we are um, just grateful for the confidence that they have in the process. And they're, they're not shying away from being um, an investment investor here. So the um, uses, of course, is a breakdown um, very basically of how we would use the, um, the sources of funds and how they would blend into the project moving forward. Remains to be seen, you know, that it'll sort out exactly this way, but this is what we have in the works that we hope to see come to fruition over the next, you know, four to six months. And I, I will add here that in this case, the mayor of Reading um, made personal phone calls to me, wrote letters, we had council members, um, we've had thank you notes. I mean, we've had, I mean, they really implored us to help them. Mm -hmm. And um, now Melissa is working through a process to really educate them. They've never done a TIF before. So we're talking to them about that possibility um, in order to um, you know, have them facilitate and do kind of their part um, to make sure this thing moves forward. So yeah, it's I'll just a say, partnership. Right, and I'll just say anecdotally, uh, when we um, told Reddy we were, or Redding, excuse me, that we were moving forward with the development, um, their reaction was tears. Um, so I think they were good tears and they were happy tears, relief maybe, um, but it really kind of um, just, you know, characterizes how sensitive and personal this is, mm -hmm. this can be to a community. I mean, this is a pretty large parcel that's in dire um, kind of straits. So we're happy to be a part of it and we look forward to moving it, you know, forward in the next few months. So this is just, um, again, we try, this is a, a layout that we are, con it's a concept, there's nothing set in stone, but we like to try and lay out a site and kind of graphically see what we maybe can do and work with it. And so as a concept, which this is subject to change is a uh, potential for the Dow chemical site. The chart is what we try and do is capture the current economic state and then marry in an, a calculation of what our return on investment metrics, those targets that we have, what that would produce specifically for a property. And then this is what we see as the potential yield for an investment um, and end result of job creation and real property uh, valuation from this site. Great. So in let's targeted let's equity- talk about, yeah, the one last one. Yep, let's talk, talk about this. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as we consider other expanding the, the strategy, we do have targeted um, acquisitions throughout Hamilton County. The um, ones in blue are some of the ones we've talked about already, Port Owens, the ones in yellow are ones that we have our, our eye on. Um, so we did try not to give you too much detail so we don't let all of our secrets out. Um, mm -hmm. But we are looking at and evaluating constantly um, prospective acquisitions that can continue to grow the portfolio. Naturally, there's an alignment on the 75 corridor. Manufacturers like to be close to the highway. They like to be co close to workforce. So we're just, we're concentrating um, in these particular areas, but obviously open to all of the county. There are just some natural attraction points for manufacturing mm -hmm. in this corridor specifically. And, you know, one of those uh, specifically um, is in Lincoln Heights. We have actually um, offered a letter of intent to a, an approximate 20 acre parcel in this community. We feel that it would be a really important um, economic kind of turning of the tide, maybe for that community, maybe that's the way to say it, but this parcel is got great access to 75. It has the adjacent, you know, class one railroad opportunity to be rail served. It is zoned industrial. So we are in the very, very early stages of a communication there. We hope to be successful in moving that conversation forward and unlocking some um, economic development and you know, new manufacturing job creation in Lincoln Heights. Um, but again, it's still a really early uh, mm -hmm. conversation, but we remain hopeful that we'll get um, a positive response from um, the seller in this instance. But just to show again, when we look at the return on investment metrics for the Lincoln Heights property, this is what we see in its current economic state, what we would hope to get for a target return on investment. And then I thought it was, as I'm sure um, everyone on you know, the call today recognizes um, the Lincoln Heights economic you know, profile, this was some data I thought was really telling that it, you know, this community could be very well served by a investment in manufacturing, job creation, and anchoring some um, new opportunity that maybe we haven't seen in quite some time. So I think it was just a, a nice representation of mm -hmm. um, the community and the opportunity here um, on this slide. But that's all I have. I tried to go quickly, but Laura, do you have anything else you want to 
add? No, I know you've had a, a long meeting and we appreciate your indulgence. Uh, and I hope you know we're, I hope you can tell we're very passionate about this manufacturing mm -hmm. uh, strategy. Um, Melissa has done a great job and uh, we've laid a lot of, of groundwork and hopefully we're gonna see some good results here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you both. Um, I'll open it up to Commissioner Parks if she might have anything she'd like to say. I do. Um, this is exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we know that Cincinnati used to be a leader in manufacturing. People moved here in order to get jobs. Mm -hmm. So um, with the revitalization of manufacturing, I just see a bright future. Mm -hmm. um, and in the different locations, you guys are strategizing, be it smart about where you're putting it and way to go girls. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, very good. And I also, uh, Jeff, did you have something you were getting ready to say? Nope. No, no nothing. Okay. Nothing I just want to say it's such a great report. I'm so excited about the future. Uh, and I was really excited about even more when you talked about how you guys sort of leaned over backwards as it relates to um, on Seymour, uh, that area midpoint and how you came in and really rescued them from all those taxes. And, and you guys need to toot your horn more because you sometimes get a bad rap on things. But I, uh, it was just really encouraging to hear that. But not only that, but the other projects that will uh, generate jobs. So I thank both of you uh, for your report. Thank you very much. It's good to be with you. Yes. Um, is there anyone on, on the line, Jackie, um, that might have comments, any um, outside residents or anything? Jackie or Bridget? I'm looking. Um, I don't okay. see any other participants. Okay. No attendees on that side. So I'm, I'm going to assume no. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you both. All right. Thank you. Happy holidays if we don't see you before then. Yeah, right. Thank right you. Back at you. Stay safe. Bye-bye. And commissioners, I would just say that, uh, again, this is a, a uh, not an insignificant component of uh, the administration's recommended budget. So again, hope this was a, uh, a helpful presentation. If there's any other questions on, on site readiness or the administration's economic development proposal, please, uh, please let me know. Okay. And Jeff, I, I thought there might be a specific site readiness uh, proposal coming forth. Is that anytime soon? Um, uh, uh, I, I think Laura mentioned that they are looking at uh, applying for an additional economic development assistance grant at mm -hmm, some point. Mm -hmm. So there may, there may be um, uh, some uh, the need for some uh, uh, letters so, of support, that type of thing. So, so in a yeah, we're looking, there are a couple of different ways in which we could use um, the money that's in the budget. We had started to apply for an EDA grant, one of their COVID grants mm -hmm. that only required a small amount of match. Mm -hmm. And then we were told just, I don't know if it was this week or late last week, Jeff, when I reached back out to you to say that that, that pool of money was so oversubscribed that they're mm -hmm. putting us back in their other bucket, which requires 50% subsidy or 50% okay. match and a lot more, the project has to be a lot more, a lot farther along in its scope. Okay. So it'll just push that, the timeline out some. Okay, all right. Okay, well, thank you. Um, Commissioner Parks, do you have anything else to bring before uh, the board? I do not, but thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Right, then I will, uh, Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. Thank hey. you. Adjourn. Thank, Thank you, guys. Later. Uh -huh.